this video is sponsored by Audible. For a free audiobook, use the link in the description below. Today is November 18th, 2024, and Reactor Magazine has released two more preview chapters. This week it's chapters 31 and 32. In this video, I'll be recapping these two chapters and giving you my thoughts. Chapter 31 is titled Experiment, and the epigraph is another part of the fourth parable from The Way of Kings. This chapter starts from Shallan's perspective. She just entered Shadesmar with Renarin, Relaine, and some of the Windrunners through one of the Urethiru Oath Gates. She sees what the tower looks like in Shadesmar for the first time since it's been reawakened, and it now glows brightly, looking like an infused sphere the size of a mountain that changes color moment by moment. Shallan is so captivated by the artistic beauty of the tower that Radiant has to take control so they can move on with their mission. She's asking the Oathgate guards if they've seen any sign of Marais and Eatil. They haven't. Radiant fills Renarin and Relaine in about the ghost bloods. Then Radiant realizes that both Relaine and Renarin Sprin aren't anywhere to be seen. It seems that Enlightened Sprin must not show up in Shadesmar the same way that normal True Sprin do. They know that they need to pinpoint where Dalinar and Navani are so they can be there when they enter the spiritual realm. And Renarin is able to point exactly where Navani and Dalinar are in the tower and Radiant notices that his arm and hand are outlined by a soft red glow. This glow moves just before he does, like an after image in reverse. She thinks this is most likely his sprin and she notices that Relaine has the same type of glow around him. They set off to go to where Dalinar and Navani are. Then we get Navani's perspective. She's with Dalinar, Gavilor, and Wit, heading down in a lift to a lower section of the tower. We see that Gav is traumatized from being tormented by the Spren back in the Kolinar Palace, and he's now scared of the other varieties of Spren too, including the tower. Navani tells him of all the good things that the tower does for people, trying to convince him that the tower isn't bad. And we also see that Navani is worried about Dalinar's lack of belief in the Almighty being God. They make it to a water cistern room and leave Gav with his governess. Inside the room, Wit tells Navani and Dalinar that he knows the perfect vision for them to test. He gives Navani a rock, which he explains is a fragment of a holy site on Ashen. We learn that these fragments of their holy site on Ashen are the reason that Shin worship rocks. We find out that Wit was there during the migration of humans from Ashen to Roshar. He's going to have Navani and Dalinar view the vision of the migration, using the rock that he gave them to anchor themselves in that specific vision while they're in the spiritual realm. Wit has both Navani and Dalinar tether themselves to the physical realm with lines of light using their bondsmithing abilities. This will allow them to pull themselves back to the physical realm if they get off course. Wit tells both of them that the spiritual realm is one of the few paths in this universe that he fears to walk. Then we get Shallan's perspective. She's flying through the tower in Shadesmar with Renarin, Relaine, and some Windrunners. As they get close to where Navani and Dalinar are, Renarin begins to tell Shallan about the vision he had of Ba Otto Mishram. Then we switch to Renarin's perspective. Being in the tower in Shadesmar is overwhelming to him due to all the sprin and lights just overwhelming his senses. He and Shallan step away from the other so he can tell her about his visions. He's very worried about Ba Otto Mishram, and he thinks that it will be extremely dangerous if she escapes her prison. Renarin realizes that Shallan wants him along because his friend can help guide them to Mishram's prison in the spiritual realm. But despite all the dangers and his worries, Renarin still decides to go along with Shallan because he feels like she lacks common sense, so he wants to stay with her to be the common sense she lacks. When they reach the room with Dalinar, Navani, and Wit, Renarin notices that Wit's soul flame shimmers with a great number of odd colors. I wonder if that's due to all the various ways his spirit web has been changed through things like holding a dawn shard and gaining access to various magic systems. They all look around for signs of the ghost bloods. They see that there are two soul flames in the air ducts. One of these soul flames is Lift. I wonder if the other one is the Mink. Although I think he left on a mission, so probably not. Who else could it be? Maybe Gavinor? Hmm, 
that'd be pretty irresponsible of Lyft if she brought Gavinor along to spy. I guess we'll just have to raffo. But let me know who you think the other soul flame belongs to down in the comments. This chapter ends as Shalon realizes that the three guards that they brought with them are actually Marais, Iatil, and Lique disguised with light weavings. Then we get to chapter 32. Chapter 32 is titled Chords of Light. And the epigraph is once again another part of the fourth parable from The Way of Kings. This chapter starts with Dalinar's perspective. It picks up just as he opens a perpendicularity. He and Navani prepare to enter the other realm that's calling to them. Then we switch to Shalon's perspective. Marais notices that she's looking at him and the three ghost bloods enter the room ready to attack. Marais has a racium dagger with an anti-light spear attached. The fight happens quickly. Eatil slashes the throat of Isasik, one of the Windrunners. Dalinar's perpendicularity opens, and Shalon creates a physical light weaving of Radiant and Shard Plate to help fight. That's a little OP, but I'm here for it. Eatil pulls out her own Racium dagger and goes for Shalon, but ends up dropping the dagger when Radiant attacks. Shalon picks up the dagger. Like is ran through by one of the Honor Sprint, and he doesn't have a Sprint that allows him to heal with Stormlight, so he dies. The Ghost Bloods are overwhelmed, and it seems that they lost. But then Marais throws his Racium dagger into the perpendicularity, causing a massive explosion that destroys the room. Then we get Dalinar's perspective. He and Navani are entering the spiritual realm with their minds, but then something snaps, their connection to the physical realm vanishing, and something rushes towards them, power, wind, and screams. This is bad. Really bad. So... <sighs> Okay, this is what I'm going to guess. I think that their physical bodies will be destroyed. Maybe since their minds aren't there, they're unable to heal their physical bodies. And to be honest, if this explosion was large enough, it would just destroy their body to the point where they wouldn't be able to heal with Stormlight regardless. I think their minds might be trapped in the spiritual realm now. Maybe they'll be trapped in the spiritual realm for the rest of this book. And if they manage to get back to the physical realm eventually, it might not be until like arc two of Stormlight. This is quite the cliffhanger and I can't wait until next week's chapters. But anyways guys, those were just my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. And we're getting very very close to Wind and Truth officially releasing. If you haven't already pre-ordered Wind and Truth, you can do so for free as an audiobook right now thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Audible. All you have to do is use the link in the description and sign up for an Audible Premium Plus 30 day free trial. Once you sign up, Audible will give you a credit and you can use this credit to get any audiobook of your choice. Being an Audible member also gives you access to the Audible Plus catalog, which includes thousands of other audiobooks and podcasts. This is a really good opportunity to try out audiobooks if you haven't in the past. It's completely free, and if you cancel your membership, you get to keep the audiobook. So to claim your free audiobook, use the link in the description below. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.